village. So she came when she was only three months old. Okay. Yeah, so the two biggest calf, they're all less than three years old. We have uh, uh, Zongo and Bila. So Mbila is the one the one uh, near us, the big one. And then the first one we have Zongo. So Zongo and Bila came on the same day from Kafue. They, they were discovered because of a uh, human wildlife conflict. So they were being chased away from the community and uh, they had no protection. Lucky enough, we kept her late and uh, went for rescue. They both came by air. They came by plane from Kafue to Lusaka. Because they were all less than five months old when they came. So now they are almost three years old. Come next year, they will graduate to Kafue National Park. So almost every year, we move two pairs in the same period into Kafue National Park. So now we have moved the number of calves from here to Kafue, where they will, we, we do put them in the same group year after year. So they will reintegrate and learn how to be independent. This is why you can't go near our calves. When you go near them, they will charge at you. When I go near them, they will come me because they have a strong bond between me and, uh, and them. When they see a keeper, they see a mother. Yeah. So now, uh, the two biggest calves, the one near us, Mbila, has been named after the, the, the stream known as uh, Mbila Stream and Zongo, uh, Shizongo Village. And uh, we have the two, uh, the second uh, uh, youngest, we have Wamwai. So, uh, though they are behind the scene, we have Wamwai and Daddy. So, so I will show you the crystal clear picture of their names. Uh, Daliso, of the three calves, the one in the middle, that's Daliso. Mm -hmm. So Daliso, which means bracing. Mm -hmm. So Daliso is only one year and uh, four months. Uh, he also came from South Wangwa. So now, uh, he's now one year four months and uh, he was found when he was only close to two months. Old. And uh, after Daliso we have Wamwai, which means uh, the lucky one. So Wamwai also came from South Wangwa and uh, just by his name, Wamwai, which means the lucky one, he was lucky to be found in a way that he was stuck in the mud hole without his mother. Yeah, so now uh, he came from South Wangwa to Lusaka and now they are all doing work together despite uh, coming from different parts of Zambia. So us as a project called Game International, our aim is to rescue, rehab and release. So now, uh, for us to combat poaching in Africa, we work across three pillars. We have community outreach, resource protection, and wildlife rescue. So under community outreach, that's my field as an education ranger, where we have a number of schools here in Zambia, close to 50 schools. So among our schools, we offer a number of lessons to our kids, conservation lessons, known as uh, Chongoro Club. So we therefore will come and bring our kids here for a school trip. They'll come here and learn how to appreciate nature. They'll go for a nature walk and learn a number of ways on how to protect our wildlife. Besides schools, we also work with our communities. We have formed what we call women groups. So a number of uh, women have been empowered. Some of them, they grow a variety of vegetables. Some, they keep some red chickens. So we do support them, we buy seeds for them, anything we find to make sure we, pro we provide to our people. You know, you can't really tell people to stop poaching without empowering them. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, there must be empowerment and uh, can they uh, comply uh, with, with our, the aim of our trying to conserve. And some of you would love to come here and uh, work as a volunteer, you can apply online. You come here for three weeks. So when you come as a volunteer, we'll be going out with me into the schools to help the kids learn how to care for nature. And we could be here to see and study behavior, how are the elephant behaving, we'll be recording the iPad to see if they are more aggressive to each other. And uh, at times we go in the field to see those human groups, have experience with them, we learn from them. In case you have any skill, you can share your skill you have with the same ladies, have a uh, survival skill in case we need to understand with their own without uh, our support because all what it is, it's for them to have a sustainable way of uh, for, them, uh, for themselves to only carry for us. So now, um, having said that, in Kafu National Park where they go, we have uh, our biggest calf in Kafu, her name is Chami Landu. Some three years ago, she made history. 
She is the first orphan infant to give birth from the world womb. And she has a cutie baby called Rutanzi David. Our calf, uh, at the time she was about to give birth, she was very far from home. But she last home near the keepers, where she gave birth from. And uh, as I'm speaking right now, the calf is doing well with the mother. Yeah, she's now three years old on this side, enjoying my birthing the mother. So I say that our aims are being achieved of making our calves independent. Yeah, so now uh, when we go to curfew, they are still in our hands, but with minimal restrictions. Some of them, they have joined the other world head. And last time, let's say we did spot them, we tried to call their names to come back, come back to us, they refused. So we are saying to us, it's a success in a way that uh, they are able to become independent without our hands. And uh, how can you tell the difference between the African elephant and the Asian elephant? The ears. The ears. Yes. Yes. Yeah, boy. The trunk. Yes. Explain. Tell us. Tell us. The ears are small and they're shaped like Africa. Which one is the small? Asian or African? Asians are small. African, okay. I will give you 50 percent. They have oh. the shape of Africa, okay. Mm. Yes, uh, African elephants they are huge in size with ears, they have large ears, okay. and the shape of the ear is the shape of African continent, like she has said. With ivory tusks, just move both yeah. sets of African elephants, they all have got ivory tusks. Asian elephant is only me. Oh, here both the female and yes. Oh. Though there are some of the calves which are born with no task. We had one with us, her name was Kasewe, who was born with no task. Even now she has got no task, she's almost ten years old. So maybe because sometimes they have uh, they have uh, the ivory. Mm. My question is why the the the, 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 the tip of the trunk, mm -hmm. our African elephant, they have two finger like projections mm. that you put on the ground. With Asian, it's only one finger to stop foot on the ground. Oh. Ah. And, uh, so that the, the, yes, yes. the Asian have got one. Yes. The Africans have got two. Two. Yes. <laughs> Like a trunk with your end. And also, they are like applying mm -hmm. mud on their body for a number of reasons. One, uh, sun protection okay. Okay. and insect protection, insect repellent. Oh. Mm -hmm. This one has even done its job here. <laughs> this one, the first one here. It's too good. So, when you call them, do they respond? They respond by name, so they know your voice. So do you keep them in this place all the time or they go in the world? They are only here for an hour. Oh, okay. It's every day it's a routine. Between 12 to 1 p.m. they are in here. After that, they go out to the world. And, and how do they come here? Do they, they always come with the keeper. Oh, okay. They work with the keeper all the time. My question is, the, the other one that had the baby from a different fish, how does the baby do it? It's the same. The same as this one? Yes. Because they are the way. These are southern. We have two types of elephants in Africa. We have first elephants in Savannah. Savannah elephants is the same. In terms of breed, some of them is a bit rough, but it looks almost the same. Don't be that known to be in the same family.